Hi everyone, Craig here for the Tropical Tribe. And this week, I'm gonna talk pests in my garden. I've had my hands full over the past couple of weeks because every plant is getting shredded and flowers are disappearing. And frustrating though it might be, I think I know what's causing the damage. We got ourselves a puppy. The pup is young, excitable, and I think it might be vegan because it's got a real taste for all things green in the garden. So I needed to build some defenses quickly. So I just grabbed whatever materials I had to hand and started building. And for me, that was the decking off cuts and those beautiful bamboo canes that I had put aside for turning my shed into a jungle hut, which means that project's been put off even longer. I just used upright bamboo posts and weaved the canes in and out to create a bit of a barrier it seems to be working for now in this bed, but this puppy is growing, so I think its time of effectiveness is limited. You can see here that I've used the same technique on the other side of the garden path. I don't think the bamboo barriers actually look that bad in a tropical garden. And the plants did look a little bit squished behind them to start with though. And again, just as a temporary measure, I've used the decking offcuts and some bamboo canes to reduce the size of the area that the pup has access to in the garden. This has really helped calm the pup down because I think they were just overstimulated. Think how many smells, colors, sounds, shapes there are in the garden. And I've started running out of bamboo canes. So then I sawed them up and just used them as upright posts in the raised bed to fill any gaps that the pup might use to go in and start exploring the back of the beds. It seems to be working most of the time. And elsewhere, I've just moved pots to create barriers. Here, to stop her getting on the deck to use it as a diving platform to jump into the stream. And here, just temporarily, I've moved this succulent that's in a pot to block another access point into the bed. It's really just sitting and watching the puppy and seeing where they find access to the beds and then finding a way to temporarily block it. But I'll admit, when I started designing and planting this garden, I never thought that I'd actually be able to get a dog. I've always wanted one. And now I've got the opportunity to do it, we went for it. So there's gonna have to be tweaks in the garden. Be that moving any plants that might be dangerous, like these Brugmansia that are up safe, well out of the way of the dog, or by creating barriers that stop the dog jumping into the beds or diving into the stream. But everything is a temporary measure that we've put in place at the moment. And I've had discussions with my wife and I've tried not to be too precious about my garden. And we've agreed on a plan on how we're gonna go forward so the dog has plenty of room to play and burn off energy. And I still have plenty of room to play and burn off energy. So the way we finally discussed and agreed <laughs> that the dog, my wife and me can all enjoy our garden is to make the front area of the garden a dedicated dog area with a barrier to protect the rest of the garden. Which means everybody and everything in the garden is safe. The pup will be close to the house, away from any hazards or dangers, and any rare, unusual or delicate plants will be protected. And this is one thing that I have learned over the years of doing my own garden. Don't forget who's gonna enjoy your garden. If you just do it all for you, nobody else is gonna come out and enjoy it as much as you do. It's been hard, but I wanted a dog, so the dog needs space to enjoy the garden. I wanted a wife, so there needs to be plants out there that she likes to look at, and I want tropical plants. So finding that balance is hard, especially in a small space, but it's worth it when everybody is out there and everybody's happy. And I honestly think this is one of the most important lessons that I've learned from doing my own garden. Garden for everybody who's going to enjoy it, not just for yourself. So there is plenty of work for me to be doing in the garden over the next few weeks. It's a weird time to be moving plants, but needs must, so I'll do it. And if I'm honest, I've got that itch. The garden's been settling in, in this layout, for a long time, and I fancy a change. So it's an opportunity to take a few plants out, move things around, and just have a play again, and try and improve it. I know our pup's young, and in time, it will respect boundaries and barriers with training but I'd love to know if anybody else in a tropical tribe has dogs or other pets that they struggle to control in their tropical styled garden. Let me know what you do to deal with it. And if you like this video, hit subscribe 
and I'll keep you updated as I tweak the garden over time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.